Okay, today the recording was behaving a little funny. It is asking me a lot of unwanted questions and it's taking time. Okay, it's good to uh, good to see all of you this morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, and also good morning to Vijay Babu, Arilla and Prabhu and Nina John. Thank you for joining class. Uh, we'll begin. So can I ask one of our... Um, online students to lead us in prayer please this morning anyone can unmute their mics and pray nobody wants to pray uh can i pray Is that okay? can you, can you can you hear me? I've unmuted. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you, Nina. We uh, didn't hear you because I realized that, um, you know, we are not having headsets. So we can't really uh, hear you. But thank you, Nina, if you pray. Thank you. Uh, can I ask Nina here in the in-person class to come and lead us in prayer, please? So we had uh, we had Nina, John, from um, the online class lead us in prayer. And now we'll have Nina from our in-person class. Can Come, Nina, you can stand here so, you know, they all can see you. Yeah. Yes. Okay, can we pray, please? Thank you, Father God, for this new day. Thank you, Lord. Help us to live according to your will, Father God. Lord, open our eyes to see you and worship you throughout the day. Remember you throughout the day, Lord. Father, whatever we are learning, help us to understand it and do it just not do it for your glory, Lord. Help, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Nina. So we had uh, two Ninas to lead us in prayer. One on the online class and the in-person class. Okay, uh, it's it's good when you come here and pray so that our online students can also see our uh, in-person students. Okay, okay, so we'll uh, continue with um, you know uh, fulfilling God's uh, plan and purpose for our lives. Uh, just as a quick recap, you know we learned that God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us even before we were born even before the foundations of the earth god has a plan for us and all the days of our life were written in his book even though even before you know anything came about okay so none of you here are an accident i'm just doing a recap okay a recap means a review of what we have learned uh, so none of you are an accident uh, you're a dream waiting to be fulfilled Okay, and there are places God wants you to go. There are people God wants you to, um, you know, uh, touch. There are lives He wants you to impact. There are things He wants you to uh, uh, accomplish, and there are cities that He wants you to shake. Okay, so isn't that a, you know, great big wonderful dream that our big God has for us? And we can think of ourselves so small and little, but He's a great big God. Okay? Okay, so we need to catch God's dream for our life because he has a big dream with a big plan and purpose for our lives. Okay, um, and then we went on to learn how do we know God's plan and purpose for our lives. So how do we know God's plan and purpose for our lives? What did we learn? We looked at the, we studied the, how do we know the plans and purposes of God for our lives? Yeah, but what did we study? Anyone in our um, uh, online class can tell me? How do we know God's plan and purpose for our lives? Yes, he has specific plans for our lives, but how do we know that? What did we learn? How can we identify God's plan and purpose for our lives? Thank you, Karen, for the through the nine guide posts. Okay, everybody, wake up, please. It's time to wake up. Okay, you know which course you're studying, right? Which one? 
thank god <laughs> because the last i think last the um, two three weeks we've been studying about the nine guide posts remember the nine guide posts that we were studying yes no thank god okay so uh, you know so how do we uh, know what god wants um, what's god's plan and purpose for our lives how do we know where he wants us to go what he wants us to do what he wants us to become is to the nine guide posts remember that okay i think it's on page 8 of your uh, of the pdf copy right uh, for our online students um, if you you know if, if you uh, look at the stream page in the stream page um, uh, i have posted okay i have posted the uh, a welcome note and also posted um, the pdf copy of our uh, the course material okay i think i posted all uh, all the three books or i would just would have posted one book uh, which i did in um, on 31st of august okay so on 31st of august i had put the welcome note course introduction and i've also uh, posted uh, the material fulfilling god's purpose for your life so you don't have to worry it's there i think it had gone right down the list because you know all the videos had come above that but i have put it right on top so if you just um, go to the stream page just um, below the link that i have uh, put for uh, you know this week is the welcome note to course introduction and the pdf copy of fulfilling god's purpose for your life which i posted on 31st august okay uh, we'll continue now so yeah so last week we saw that you know god before he release us to fulfill his purpose for our lives you know what does god do for god releases us to fulfill his purpose for our life what does uh, what does he do he prepares us right okay he prepares us okay so uh, we saw how he takes us through the preparation process okay and uh, what he does Uh, before he releases us to fulfill his purpose and we saw the lives of uh, david paul moses okay uh, so we stopped at um, you know we were on the same chapter we were looking at um, how does god prepare us he prepares us through his how does god prepare us thank you nina through his written word okay Uh, how else has god pr prepared us holy spirit uh, thank you sri radha so god prepares us to the word he prepares us to the holy spirit he also prepares us through other people okay so we stopped at that he also prepares us through life experiences okay in life we go through many ups and downs we go through many good times difficult times challenging times Uh, yeah we go through seasons of uh, difficulties you know challenges uh, uh, tribulations um, and all that is not because god hates us he does not love us okay that is um, incorrect that is wrong um, you know um, uh, that's not the truth but we see that you know in romans chapter 5 verses 3 to 4 it says that you know what does our tribulation do if you look at romans chapter 5 Verses three and four is there in your notes in the PDF. Please look at it. What does it say? Tribulation. What is tribulation? It means difficulty. When you go through difficulties, what does what does it produce? What happens when you go through difficulties? It produces what? Perseverance. It produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Character. Hope. Okay. So what is perseverance? never giving up okay never giving up okay perseverance is never giving up even though you're going through difficulties hardships no matter what you're facing you never give up okay so we need to know that when we go through difficult times uh you know it is because god wants to build our character okay god wants to build our character he wants to make us strong in our spirit man he wants to remove the things that are um, and not required of us 
uh, he molds us and shapes us to be who he wants us to be or to be just like Christ, be Christ-like. Okay, so we need to understand that our life is not a hundred meters dash. You know, hundred meters. How many of you have run a hundred meters race? <laughs> okay, hundred meters race means what? How do you run it? Really fast from the start to the finish. Okay, you can see the finish line. You're focused on that, and you just run all out. But life is not a hundred meters race. It's a marathon. Right? What is the meaning of a difference between a hundred meters race and a marathon? Ah, slow and steady, and there's a pace. You keep up the speed. Okay. If you run too fast, you'll run out of speed. You know, if you keep up the speed, you know you and you can't see the finish line, but you know there is a finish line. Yes or no? You can't see it, but you know it is there, and you keep that consistent speed. That means you keep enduring. You might feel tired, you might feel thirsty, uh, you might be sweating, you know, you might be losing strength, but you're still running. And so life is a marathon, and we need to endure, we need to persevere, we need to keep at it, even though we go through difficulties, because that is going to build your character, and character is going to bring, bring hope. Hope means what? That things will change in the future. God has something best for me. Things are going to change in the future. Okay. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 4. Uh, let's look at verse 4. It says, can somebody read that verse 4? It's there in your PDF. James chapter 2, verse 4. Yeah. So it says, let patience have its perfect work so when you're running the marathon of your life you need to have patience okay do we all have patience we don't have patience this morning this morning i was coming I, in my car and on the right i was right on the right hand side of the road and there was a barricade i mean the road barricade the divider there and i slowed down because there was a bump and there was a lady who came in a small car and there was a white car, uh, you know, next to me in the left-hand side, and she just came and hit my car in the front, and it's all scratched. You know, no patience. You know, no patience to slow down, uh, to speed from the left, to know that there are two cars, and she's trying to squeeze in between the two cars. We don't have patience. None of us have patience, right? We are all uh, in a rat race, running crazily. You know, so we in in our uh, in life, we need to have. Patient. We need patience. We need to be very, very patient. Okay. So when we, uh, for example, if you put potato in the cooker, okay, to boil, or you just put it in a pan to boil, you don't have to two minutes expect the take out, uh, stop the, you know, put off the gas and then open the cooker and expect the potato to be boiled. Would it be boiled? No. You'll have to put it back in the cooker and you'll have to, you know, close it and you'll have to switch on the stove again for it to cook. Okay, so you know, uh, in the preparation, sometimes when God is preparing us, we don't like waiting time. See, we want everything to be quick, fast, and instant. No, we don't like to wait. Oh, why is God taking so long? You know, He took 30 years for uh, David and all of those things. Why is He taking so long in my life? We don't like to wait. We want to jump. No, we want to jump out. And uh, if you jump out, God makes sure that you go back into the cooker. <laughs> right? God make sure that you go back into the same pressure cooker because there you are learning things that is going to impact the rest of your life. So don't take the escape route. Be patient because when you're patient, what this, what does the word of God says? You may be perfect and complete lacking nothing. Okay? So why is God taking you through all of these things in life? To be patient so that you may be perfect and complete Lacking nothing. Okay. Uh, even Jesus learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Did Jesus go through suffering? No? Yes, no. Yes, he went through suffering. <coughs> Sorry. He went through suffering and he learned in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8 says, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered even though he was god who became man 
you know he learned obedience you know for god what is uh, important yes obedience obedience to authority obedience to him obedience to his word obedience to what uh, the laws of the land the rules of the land whatever it is you know god requires obedience obedience is better than sacrifice so our gifts our talents nothing is nothing before god what we accomplish is nothing before god but for him obedience is everything okay so even jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered so if jesus had to learn obedience to the things he suffered how much more should you and i okay so that is talking about these are a few things that you know helps us uh, know how god prepares us his word holy spirit other people life experiences and um, you know oh uh, yeah the life experiences we'll move on things to keep in mind as you go through the preparation process so what do you keep in mind when god is preparing you okay for the season next season or for this season what is he, uh, what you need to keep in mind first thing we need to keep in mind is we need to cooperate with god okay we need to cooperate with god in the preparation process okay first corinthians 39 says we are god's fellow workers you are god's field and you are god's uh, building okay so you know even as you're going through life you can say god you know um, what are you trying to accomplish through my life in this season what are the things that you want to build in my life in this season right now is your preparation time so each season is a preparation for the next season of your life so you can say god what are you preparing me uh, in this season right now what are you preparing me what are you showing me what are you telling me is there anything in my life areas in my life that i need to set right show me god so that i can do it and as god and you know uh, as god wants to build you you need to cooperate with him okay so when god says these are the things that i want to change in your life i want to reconstruct you know i want to remove then you know um, so that you can be christ like then we need to cooperate with god we say god i am willing uh, for and allowing you to let you build these things in my life okay so we need to make a conscious effort i hope you're listening you know we need to make a conscious effort to ask god otherwise you will never know what season you are in what's the next season what you have to do in the season what god is teaching you in the season you will just go through life you know and it will just become sometimes it will be just boring but if you ask god god what are you teaching me now what are you telling me what are you showing me how are you preparing me for this season how are you preparing for me for the next season show me areas in my life where you want me to correct myself to check myself is there any area in my life that i'm not being obedient to you show me god you know it's important for us to ask god and he shows it to us when he shows it to us we must be willing to say god i'm willing and allowing you to build me up and change my life okay so the second thing to keep in mind as we go through the preparation process is your attitude matters attitude is very very important okay your altitude the uh, the 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 heights that you go through in life is all dependent on your attitude okay if you you know you can climb up the ladder of success but if you have a a uh, wrong attitude you have a nasty attitude that's not going to keep you there for too long so we need to maintain a good attitude the next thing you need to keep in mind is consistency is where the power is i said life is a marathon right and somebody said you need to keep steady pace speed keep the speed steadily when you're running a marathon so you need to be having that consistent speed what is the meaning of consistent same you know Uh, not changing but we don't be consistent in our walk with god okay we have to grow in the things of god we don't stay and say okay i have accepted christ jesus as my lord and savior i'm born again i'm in bible college i've also been baptized in the holy spirit amen hallelujah and uh, you know leave it there but you need to keep growing more in the things of god because there are more revelations that god has uh, to reveal to us through his word more things of god that you can grow in um, very very spiritually or you can uh, flow in the gifts of the spirit so you know but you need to be consistent in your um uh you know walk with god not sometimes saying okay i'm going through a hard season god does not love me does not care for me 
I'll just forget about him. I'll just do what I want. See, or uh, you know, I'm love. I'm in love with this person, and I know it's, he's not a believer or she's not a believer. And um, uh, you know, I need I need an ask God about this. I can just do what I want. I can marry this person. So we're just walking out of God's will. Okay, so we need to be consistent in our walk with God. Means you know, in our attitudes, in the in the areas of our obedience, in the uh, the way we see people, view people, we relate to people, all should be very very consistent. Okay, then we need to be faithful in the little things. Then God will promote you to the next. Okay, you need to be faithful, all of you. Remember uh, here it says uh, in Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the good stewards, you know, uh, Jesus said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over few things. I will make you, you know, ruler over many things. Okay. And uh, we also see a parable in um, similar parable of the uh, in Luke chapter 19 verses 11 to 27. It's not there in your notes. Uh, Luke chapter 19 was 11 to 27 you know um, uh, this king went off to a far off country and he gives uh, one one mina that is just say one one coin to each of his 10 uh, servants and when he comes back the first servant says you know I I multiplied I put it into use and I earned for you 10 more minas so what did he says he says you know you have been faithful you know I will give you to reign over 10 cities okay and uh, the next one came and he said okay i have you gave me one mina but i made it into five um minas and he said uh, well done you know uh, you also will be in charge over five cities and then the person with uh, another person came with that one mina he says no i didn't do anything about it so they say take away that one mina from him and give it to the one that has 10 and you know um, uh, and throw this man, you know, where there is weeping and gnashing of uh, uh, teeth. And then it says, um, verse 26 of Luke chapter um, uh, 19, it says, uh, For I say to you that to everyone who has will be given, and from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Okay, so God has given each one of you talents he's given each one of us talents but if you don't use your talents what is he going to do he will take it away and give it to the one who's used the talents and multiplied it so you see the importance of you know um, uh, being productive you know in uh, you know god is not just looking at keeping our talents to ourselves but god is actually uh, uh, you know like a boss you know he's like a master he's looking for productivity just like the worldly bosses, he's looking for productivity. What have you earned? You know, how have you doubled it? How have, what have you done with the resources that I have uh, given you? So if you're faithful in small things, God will be uh, make you faithful in bigger things. So even now, you know, uh, if you're faithful even in small things, like even doing your duties, you know, God will make you um, uh, see your attitude and he will make you you know, uh, raise you up to a greater uh, level. Look at Joseph. You know, Joseph, when he was in, in uh, Potiphar's house, he did not say, hey, man, I'm a rich man's son. I've never swept. I've never swabbed. I've never washed toilets. And, and I've never watered the plants and everything. I've never done any work. My father has you know, treated me like a king, like a prince. You know, and I'm not slave material. I'm not going to do it. Uh, but it, only when Pharaoh um, comes to the house, maybe he would take a cloth and just wipe. But no, you know, uh, the Bible, of course, does not say it. But, you know, God saw Joseph. Okay, he, that means he basically sees his attitude. How is his attitude in the situation where he was unjustly treated, thrown as a slave? How is his attitude? You know, he doesn't throw up his air. He doesn't throw up who he is. He's humble enough and he does his chose he does his work and what is uh, god gives him favor in the eyes of potiphar now how many servants potiphar has why does all people why does he have to see joseph why does he have to make him from a slave to a manager in charge of his entire household see and not only that potiphar is able to see that because of joseph his 
you know, he's becoming more rich. There's more productivity in his grains and livestock and everything. That is how God blesses us when we are faithful in little things. So we need to be faithful in little things. Then God can entrust you with bigger things. So God doesn't immediately give you big things to do. He gives you small things. He sees how faithful you are. And he sees how faithful and committed you are, give you bigger things. But sometimes in that time, that course, nobody will see you. Nobody will admire you. Nobody will clap hands, applause, nothing. But God is seeing and the reward will come. Okay. And um, the next one is be, beware of complacency. Um, you know, don't go through life just thinking, oh, you know, God has a plan and purpose for life. I'll take it easy. I'll just sit back, you know, uh, just go through seasons of life. Some of us are just going through the seasons of life. And, you know, you you say, OK, I'll wait till God takes me and what he wants to do with me. Uh, you know, when you're complacent, things will not happen in your life. OK. And. Um, the changes that God wants to bring in your life will not be brought about because you're complacent. Okay, go beyond yourself. Do things that God has said before you in each season. Okay, and the preparation time is never wasted time. Okay, that means um, how long was uh, Paul and David and everybody, Moses, how long it took for preparation? 40 years. David? Yeah, he was he was sworn as king at when he was seventeen, but he became king at uh, thirty. And Saul, thirty three, and he started his son at the age of fifty. Okay, so you can see the age difference that is there, the preparation time and that God takes. So don't be hasty. Uh, you know, uh, don't uh, run ahead of God. Be patient, endure, go through things, and let each preparation, uh, sorry, each season run its course okay are you following with me just looking like that i hope you're look, you're following okay okay anyone has any questions any questions okay any questions from our online students in this lesson god's preparation process Okay. Okay, we'll move on to positioning ourselves to fulfill his purpose. Okay. So if you want to fulfill God's purpose for your life, it's important for you to position yourself. You know what's the meaning of position? Position is basically standing in the right place at the right time, you know, so that you can receive God's uh, favor over your life okay so part of uh, god's preparation process or part of fulfilling god's will for our lives it's important to position ourselves okay for example if the bus stop is right outside our gate you know i don't go and stand i don't go and stand near the bakery there right i will stand near the gate but if the bus stop is near the bakery then i'll have to walk up to the bakery and stand there to get a bus Okay, so you have to stand at the right time, the right place, uh, and position yourself right so that you can you can fulfill God's purpose for your life. You can receive His favor and His grace. So positioning simply means to be sensitive to God, being sensitive to God, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and learning to be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. So what is positioning is basically being sensitive to God. What's the meaning of sensitive? It means constantly listening to God, constantly listening to the Holy Spirit, and also learning to be at the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing. OK? So we look at uh, the first thing. We need to position ourselves to fulfill his purpose. OK? Uh, and the narrative given here is Esther chapter 4 verses 12 to 14 we looked at it i think uh, two weeks back okay and we know that esther is a was is a jew okay was a jew and uh, but she married a pagan king right yes and um, it was not 
you know uh, uh, the jews don't marry outside uh, the you know gentiles but they marry within their own culture but here was a jewish uh, young beautiful girl who married somebody who was a, a pagan king and uh, but we know why god took her there in that palace right um, and you know we know that esther was brought up by her uncle mordecai because she was an orphan and um, ever since esther was in the became a queen you know mordecai was to sit near the king's gate always uh, to inquire about esther how she is doing okay and so you uh, you know um, the wicked haman he gets the king to pass a rule saying all jews should be annihilated uh, killed on such and such a day and then mordecai you know is weeping mourning and tells esther you know go to the king and tell him uh, and save your people okay and says um, and then you know mordecai says the king has not called me so was look at your uh, notes please esther chapter 4 verse 13 and mordecai told them to answer esther do you think in your heart that you will escape the king's palace any more than and then all of the other jews okay says if you remain it's there in your notes um says if you remain silent at this time deliverance and relief will arise for the jews from another place okay but if you and your father's house will perish yet know that you know you have who knows that you've come to this kingdom for such a time as this okay so mordecai is telling uh, esther if you don't you know get help for the jews you know there will be help from someone else from somewhere else god will deliver his people but who knows that you god has brought you in this position for such a time as this that means it's such a time as this to help his people so it's like telling esther see beyond what meets thee Sometimes, you know, we need to, in God's world, in, in, uh, uh, when we are relating with God, we need to see beyond what God is seeing than just what we see in our physical eyes. So we need to see beyond what meets the eye. See, um, like it's telling us to see that you've been placed here for the deliverance of the people. Don't just, don't just think you're a queen here. You know, just see beyond that. Beyond, see what beyond meets the eye. That means see beyond is, you know, see that God has brought you for such a time as this to deliver his people. And that is why he's brought you into this position. So you have been positioned, you know, um, uh, Mordecai is saying you've been positioned strategically to do something of significance for God's kingdom. Okay. So also in our lives, God positions us at the right time in the right place to fulfill something that uh, we need to see beyond just what meets the eye, okay? Sometimes we just want to see what we think and what we want to see, but God is seeing beyond. He's telling us, look beyond what I have planned for you, what I have uh, done. It's big. Uh, it's something great. You know, see beyond. And um, when we're able to see beyond to the eyes of faith and what God is seeing, then, you know, uh, God is telling, you know, beyond there is something that is of significance, something that is strategic, that God is, do, uh, you know, doing, and that is uh, he, that's, that God wants to do in your life, uh, and where God has placed you, he wants you to do something more significant and something more strategic, okay? So we need to learn to position ourselves to fulfill God's purpose. So you need to understand why of all people God has called me to Bible college. You know, why of all people God has put me in this uh, office? You know, for those of you online who are working, why of all, all people, why am I born in this geographical area? You know, what is your purpose, God, for putting me in this geographical area? Whichever state, whichever place, or if God moves you from one place to another place, you know, ask God, you know, there is a, pers a purpose. Say, God, maybe I move to the city to, um, you know, study in a Bible college, but you see beyond, help me to see beyond. What are you doing here right at this time, this place for me? Show me strategically. And what is the significance of me coming here? Show it to me. So when you understand the whole truth about positioning, you know, um, then things will fall into place. So when you plan to study, it will not just be to get a degree, but it will be something more bigger. Okay, so you, when you are studying, you will just say, God, I'm not just here to get a degree, but I'm, you know, I'm here, um, uh, you know, uh, to do something significant for your kingdom. 
you know, to learning here, I'm studying here so that I can do something of significance or value for the kingdom of uh, God. So even as you are in the Bible college, you know, just let it not be that you want to get a degree, but you're saying, God, there's something bigger than this, the degree that I'm going to get. Even as I study in this Bible college and get a degree, it is to do something significant for your kingdom to do something significant for the kingdom of God. And so say, God, I want to be the right time, the right place, uh, and what you're doing in my life. Um, and you know, you brought me here, and this is helping me to get to where you want me to be. Okay, so similarly, for those of us who are working, you know, our jobs can be something that we just look at it for as our bread and butter, just to earn money to eat and our uh, uh, you know, and to care for our personal needs. But our job becomes something very strategic when we say, God, you know, I want to be in the right place doing the right job so that I can do something significant for your kingdom. So wherever we are, whether Bible college, politics, business, you know, education field, wherever, we're just looking at it with a beyond what meets the eye. They're saying, God, you put me here in this place uh, for to do something significant, to build your kingdom, show me, and I want to do it and i want my job or you know if you are a housewife or if you're a parent you know i want you you made me a housewife or you made me um, a parent or you made me in this position god i want to do something that this you, you've strategically placed me here so that i can do something significant for the kingdom of god okay so we must be positioned um properly to fulfill god's purpose for our lives okay the second thing is we need to position ourselves to receive his provision okay what's the meaning of provision provision your needs okay provision is uh you want needs you have needs in your life things that you want food you know clothing water whatever shelter emotional needs everything you know so even that you know when um, you know god provides for us when we are positioned correctly okay even in the provision of god is connected to our positioning so if you are not receiving anything from god and you're asking him god i'm not receiving this why are you not giving it to me why is there lack in this area then you need to know that you're not positioning yourself right sometimes we can miss out on god's provision if we are not positioned correctly okay um it's not that god does not want to provide for us it's just that we are not at the right place at the right time okay let me give you an example first first kings chapter 17 it's there in your notes you can uh, look at your notes um you know if you can follow through in your notes, then you won't uh, dream, you won't be lost, and you won't feel sleepy. So it's good to listen and to follow through. Okay. So First Kings chapter seventeen verses one to nine. Okay. We see um, uh, Elijah's story here. Elijah goes and tells King Ahab that there's not going to be rain in the land uh, because he's been very wicked. Okay. And what does God? What does God say uh, after that? Elijah is running away from the king right why is elijah running away from the king because he knows he's given a bad news to the king and the king is going to kill him yes thank you okay he's going to kill him so he what does he do he runs and when he runs god tells him go to the brook of cherith okay brook is a small stream go to the brook it's in a place called cherith and you stay there and i'm going to send you food by dunzo Okay, and the ravens are the dunzo in those days. God used the ravens as dunzo to dunzo food for Elijah. Okay, and um, uh, they bought food for him morning and uh, evening. Okay, and we see that the stream dried up because there was no rain. Okay, there was famine. And uh, God told Elijah, go to the town of Zarephath. And there you will find um, a widow, and she will pro and just that you will find a widow. Okay. Now, what if uh, you know uh, Elijah would have said, "God, I don't want to go to Zarephath." No, Zarephath is actually the place of uh, the wicked queen Jezebel, and they are all looking for me, and they will search for me in the cities. And if they find me in Zarephath, then I will surely be killed. I'm safer here in this wilderness near this. Uh, uh, you know, brook of water. What if 
Elijah would have said that. You know, he would have lost out on God's provision for his life. Because the provision here at Brook of Cherith was over. The season was over. God is moving him to another season where he's going to provide him through other means. And what if Elijah was saying, no, God, I don't want to go. I want to be here. Then, you know, um, he would have starved to death. He may have starved to death. You know, sometimes we are like that. We don't want to move. You know, God is telling us, move from Cherith to Zarephath. And we don't want to move in life. We say, no, God, I'm happy here. I'm happy what I'm doing. I don't want to move because move, you know, every move is going to be very, very difficult. Okay. So you don't want to move. And, um, you know, uh, and we want, we expect God to provide for us to take care of us. And we don't expect, when we don't receive from God, we don't receive favor. We don't receive God's provision, whether it's finances, emotionally, what he's doing, blessing us in our job, in our business, whatever we are doing, we're wondering, you know, is God angry with us? He hates us. He does not love us, which is all lies because God cannot hate. Okay, God is love. He always loves us. And how do we know He always loves us? We look at the cross. You know, it shows the extent of His love for us. His love for us never changes. And God loves us the same way He loves His Son. Okay, so, you know, all the lies that we believe and it takes us away from God. So we can't blame God if we fail to receive the provision. We need to blame ourselves because we are not in the right place at the right time doing what God wants us to do. When we are in the right place and in the right time, He will just supernaturally just provide everything. Okay, and I have acting experienced that in my entire life. You know, from the time I went to Bible college, I told you, I don't know who's going to pay my fees. My fees was paid of almost 80,000. That is way back in the 90s. It was quite a lot of money, almost 90,000. My toiletries, my train fare up and down home, everything was just, of course, I had to work for that, taking care. But, you know, never God in these, um, you know, uh, I went to Bible college, I think, in 1993, I think, you know, um, uh, 1994. But never, you know, from that time, God has let me stretch my hand out to anyone. I've always given to people, but I've never borrowed from anyone so in the you know in the final year after studying six years with all my classmates when i shared with them my testimony about how i didn't know who's going to pay my fees in bible college and everything they were shocked they could not believe me because i they used to come and borrow money from me and i used to lend it to them because you know in those days we didn't have atms and and uh, the sun banks and all that uh, and we were on right on top of a hill we had to wait for money order by post and it takes a long time especially when it comes from the northeast and all that so they used to borrow for me and they just couldn't believe that what i'm saying you know and that is how god uh, uh, how faithful god is but we need to position ourselves in the right place at the right time and we will just see God's provision. We will just see things miraculously taken care of. And he has just given me exceedingly and abundantly more than even I can ask, think, or imagine. Okay, And that is how faithful uh, God is. Okay, So we need to position ourselves right if we want to receive God's provision. Okay, The next thing is we need to position ourselves right to be protected. Okay. Uh, psalm 91, I sh I'm sure you all know Psalm 91, right? It's a very wonderful psalm. Uh, can somebody read uh, verses um, 1 and 2, please? Thank you. So what does it say here? When can we be under the shadow of the Almighty? Yes. When you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, that's when you are under the shadow of the Almighty. What's the meaning of shadow of the Almighty? Under His covering, under His protection. Okay, when you're under God's covering and protection, no harm can befall you. That's what we uh, uh, we read in the you know in the in the uh, upcoming verses. Okay, he says, because you have made the Lord who's my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. Verse ten, no plague shall come near your 
dwelling. So when will no evil befall you and no plague come near your tent when you are in the secret place of the Most High? What's the meaning of secret place? Is there a secret place that we have to go and hide to find God? What's a secret place? Yeah, it's basically not just a, a place where you have a personal time. It's you are constantly in intimate fellowship with God. You're just connected to Him. You're just tuned in. You're abiding in the uh, wine. That's when you can bear fruit. Okay, so you're totally connected. You are there under, you know, in His presence, constantly living in His presence. When do you constantly live in His presence? Sorry, when you're constantly mindful of every little thing that you're doing is, you know, what God, what do I do? How do I react? This is not what should I have said. This is not how I should have reacted. Okay, so it's constantly be mindful that God is there with you. Okay, the Holy Spirit is there with you. So when we are in the secret place of the Most High God, then we are under His shadow, which means we are under His protection, He's under His covering. Yeah, I'll just take a question. Okay, and what happens when under His protection, there is no evil that will befall us, no plague that will come near our tent. Okay, yes, Sean, your question. Okay, Sean's question is, uh, you know, he's referring to Matthew chapter 5, verse? Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, where it says you have to go into a room and lock yourself up and pray. Is that the secret place? No, that's, uh, that is a secret place. Yeah, you know, you're meeting with God, but your secret place is basically you are in constant, you know, fellowship with God, intimacy with God, Okay. Um, it's not just a one-off thing that you do once in a, you know, I can just go to my secret place, a room, we have a prayer room at home, we can just go to the prayer room at home and pray and then the rest of the day I can do what I want. Then I'm not under the shadow of his wings, under his protection because I'm just doing a ritual of just reading God's word and praying and the rest of the day I'm just living my life like an, any worldly person. Okay, so it is only when we are in constant tune and intimacy with God doing Every step of the way, every minute we are obeying God, doing what honor, honors Him, then, you know, we are um, in the secret place. We are totally in intimacy with Him. Then we are under His, the shadow of His wing. So your protection is connected to the fact that you have made the Most High your dwelling place. Okay? If you don't make the Most High your dwelling place, then evil can befall you. Okay, so as long as the Most High is your dwelling place, is my dwelling place, your dwelling place, um, and I'm I'm there, I'm not moving out, I'm not jumping in and out. See, I'm not saying, God, you know, these areas I'll follow you, these areas I'll jump out, I'll do what I want, I'll come back when I need your help. No, we are consistently there in that place, in the center of His will, fully dependent on Him, Okay, doing what his word tells us to do, abiding under the shadow of things, then we experience the protection in the secret place from God most high. Okay, so if you want to be protected from the evils of this world, sickness, disease, you know where you need to be. You know, constantly in tune and intimacy with God. Okay, before we go for our break, uh, Jay Chin Joel has a question. During a particular season, when I don't do or obey what the Lord wants me to do, does that delay or take away God's purpose in my life? What's the lesson or corrective step from here? Okay, um, good question. Thank you, Jay Chin. So here we see that, you know, um, uh, in a particular season, when you don't obey what God wants you to do, it yes, it delays. You know, example of Moses. You know, Moses, uh, God... He recognized that God was raising him up in the palace to be the deliverer of uh, the Israelites, the Hebrew people, but he took matters into his hands and that delayed the whole process by another 40 years. Okay. Um, but did, um, did it take away God's purpose for his life? No. He's, God still 
you know, called him back as a leader, sent him as a leader to deliver his people out of uh, Egypt. And what's the lesson or corrective step from here is the lesson to learn from all of these uh, people like Moses and the others is, you know, uh, when we go back to God, he's willing to forgive us and take us back and uh, you know, put us back on track you know, um, uh, help us. Um, we we learn that you know we uh, he's willing to um, change us, and then he's willing to again uh, get us back on track to fulfill his purpose uh, for our lives. Okay, the corrective steps is you know be um, uh, read God's word, uh, repent, confess, don't do the same things again. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. Build your intimacy, your inter in your relationship with God. I hope that answers your question, Jaychin. Okay. Okay, we'll go for our break. Uh, I hope there's some tea. Uh, we'll go for our break and then we'll come back after the break. Okay.